The satellite industry traditionally has been um, a proprietary implementation protocols wise, right? They did not adopt the traditional cellular uh, like 3G, 2G. Um, so now we're seeing that they are particularly with deployments of LEO, low earth, earth orbit uh, um, deployments, we're seeing a, uh, a strong interest in, in using um, 3GPP standard there. So essentially 3, uh, 4G or 5G. Uh, and also, that's one one piece, meaning that it, what goes into the satellite itself speaks 5G, let's say. Second is directive phone. Uh, rather than using regular, rather than using satellite phones, which tend to be bulky, um, using your regular off-the-shelf phones like this and being able to communicate with the phone directly. So directive phone is, a, is the second piece. And, and the benefit of both of these things are economies of scale, right? Um, it's... Uh, I'd be able to sell a chip into a satellite space uh, with the type of uh, uh, economics that I do into a base station on a terrestrial thing. Whereas alternatively, these guys would have to implement custom things using FPGAs and, and power and those things are very expensive uh, in satellite. So, so we are seeing a very strong interest in moving towards uh, uh, a standards-based uh, uh, satellite implementations. Uh, as you know, EdgeQ chipset is um, is underneath it all is software defined physical layer, meaning that it's uh, we can implement this uh, the Phi in, using software which is modifiable. Uh, in satellites, uh, it, it, they're peculiar in the sense that you know satellite is always moving, which means you have a base station that's moving, which is unique, right? That doesn't happen on the ground. So when you do that, uh, there's this thing called the Doppler compensation that you have to do which is to compensate the fact that you know, the satellite is moving not fixed and then the phone could potentially moving a little bit as well. Uh, so somebody has to compensate for this and that implementation has to be done inside the Phi. Uh, we are uniquely positioned to do that. That's one. Second is we're also very low power. So to, uh, traditionally, the satellite companies uh, used FPGAs to, uh, to implement these things in a custom manner, which would make sense. Um, and that is power, uh, uh, high power. High power generally means high, uh, uh, larger weight. The reason is they, these satellites have to have um, uh, solar panels that, that have to get more power in through sunlight, and that essentially makes everything more expensive uh, when something is uh, heavy. Uh, so with EdgeQ, we kind of remove the power piece uh, down to, or bring it down to something like 15 watts per hour chip, for example, compared to something like you know 50 to 100 watts. So there's a huge difference. So we are seeing a lot of interest in EdgeQ for this. Now that's the positive side. I mean, it's not all all rosy because uh, the chips have to be radiation hardened uh, because you're you're looking at stuff in the sat uh, in space. Uh, if it's on the ground, it's easy, but if it's on the, uh, up in the sky, it's harder. Uh, second uh, piece of this thing um, is that, you know, these are long cycles. You're talking about five to 10 year cycles to revenue. So, so you have to be very, very patient uh, with this thing, but, but the, the, the margins are really good uh, in, in this space.